welcome to my living room. Today my living room is all the way home to Pengrove, California. Well, here's my uh, part of my saddle collection. And I've got a lot of different saddles here that aren't the same type. They have different angles, different widths, different configurations to fit a wide variety of horse. One saddle is not going to fit one horse. I hold my saddle. I hold my saddle like I'm holding books. Try lugging these things around all day like this, you're going to be tired at the end of the day. So I hold it on my hip like this. Got my pads here. I'm good to go ahead and get them saddled. And again, we're going to saddle them without being tied up, okay? Let's just go ahead and get them saddled up. And you can see here, We'll eventually, you know, in this course, we'll maybe have a whole t show about saddles and saddle fits, but this is a, a Chaz Weldon saddle. It's a drop plate, three-quarter inch rig. These are all things that are probably talking, talking, like talking Chinese to you, but in the future we'll have more time to do a real thorough presentation on saddles and saddle fit. So I create this tent underneath there, these big high withers, but I also want to be able to make sure I can put my hand underneath the gullet where it doesn't push down. Now typically a lot of these saddles, the high withered horse of this, this would be eaten into his wither area. So I have these nice pads designed, create like a tent effect, but I can still put my hand underneath there when I snug him down. Hey, then again, it's gotta be perfect saddle fit, okay? So for the horse that came from overseas, imported, went to the, the fanciest barns in the country, they couldn't do this. Well, I've got Rico out here in our large arena. I've got him in his halter and lead rope. It's all attached. And his 12-foot lead line, I have it attached to his horn. I want to choose to do some ground school with him with a longer rope. I have my 12-foot halter and lead rope, and i got a carabiner. So what I do here is I'll put my carabiner here and get my hondo here and put this right inside the carabiner. Okay, now I've got a round pen that's 45 foot in length or plus. I'm going to use this rope judiciously, my body language first, and we'll do some ground school with Rico here with a long rope, okay? We'll go off to the right. And so when I have my horses on a line, it's my job to be in position and straightness and balance is critical, particularly for these older horses. You know, I mentioned good shoeing, good footing, just chasing them around in a fast circle with them not balanced is not going to be good for his well-being, okay? So we got Rico doing a nice forward trot. I'm making little adjustments with my inside rein. If I was riding them, I'd be making little adjustments with my inside rein. So how much should Rico's body be bent? Well, he'd be bent to the size of the circle I'm putting him on. And I'm trying to drive the inside hind up to the inside front. Hey, let's go upwards to a canter. Bring my energy up, bring it more. And it didn't have to throw my slack at him. I'll kiss for speed. There we go, get a nice forward canter. Looking good. And let's see if I can go ahead and make a change and bring it to a trot. How about this, those downwards transitions, down to a walk. I'll exhale, change my energy. And bring them down to a walk. Man, there's a thousand different postures and positions. Let's go ahead and roll the hind quarters away. Bring the front end through, better. And we'll try that one more time. Position ourselves, roll the hind quarters away. Bring the shoulders on through. One more time, roll the hind quarters away. Bring the shoulders on through. Try that one more time on this left side. Roll the hind quarters away, shoulders. I want to come towards you, get them a little bit 
Got shoulder nut left side, hind end, and the front end right there. Good, pretty cool, huh? Let's go ahead, ride him in our snaffle bit. He's been ridden in every freaking torture device known to man. And we'll use our snaffle bit as a teaching tool. But let's first put this on him over the halter and lead rope, okay? So let's go ahead, get my brow band, my reins, politely put it in his mouth. And now you're seeing, what's up with this, Dennis? You have your, your halter left on there. Well, a lot of times when you're on your ride, you want to put your snaffle on, take your halter off, your horse can exit stage left. This way now, let's go ahead and secure our throat latch. Now, let's take our halter off. Our hand tied 12 foot lead line with our halter. Let me get in a position where you can see this here. Take it all down here. Now, you say, well, how are you gonna get that off? Well, the nose band goes inside of his mouth, behind the back of the bit, comes out the bottom, just like that. Pretty cool, huh? It may help you. And it can go on the same way, you just re reverse your, your steps. Before when he used to get on his horse, he would just leave. Didn't know where he was going, but he was going somewhere fast. And he was in a hurry to get someplace fast to rest. So why do horses run away to get someplace fast to rest? He's learned to make it rest with me. And so just getting on my horse, stand still, chill, dude, it's okay. These are all things that we worked with him on the most basic, 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 from putting a halter on to our round pen to our ground school to create a consistent communication with him. Let's go for a ride. This is a very exquisite, sophisticated horse through his education. And he, you know, he was bought with the intention of having him show his rider all of the refined moves of horsemanship. And uh, he's at that spot today where he could offer that to us when it's his idea. And so uh, Rico, he, he has a passport. Uh, he has, you know, a bright future ahead of him, I think, with his philosophy and his attitude and Candy's uh, willingness to be humble enough to become a student of horsemanship. And if you wanted me to define humble, I'll do it in one word, teachable. And if you're watching this TV show, it tells me that you want to learn. And uh, this horse here is your best teacher. So we'll go through a few moves with him. And one of the first moves that I worked with him would be, well, can I get him soft in the pole? Like that. And boy, that softness at the pole, so important. Because boy, you want that pole soft, because if it's tight here, it goes through his whole body. And it's so easy to neglect that and just kind of fold them over at the neck and still have them all bracy up there at the pole. And so we worked a lot because he was learning how to pull on the human because they were putting heavier artillery on him to get him to submit. And I just went right back to a snaffle bit and uh, applied good horsemanship. And I'm a student of Ray Hunt and Tom Dorrance. Those gentlemen are gone now and they, they have forgotten more than I'll ever know or learn, but I'm working on it every day and uh, it's just fun to see things from the horse's perspective. So I have the pole soft. Could I actually create a lateral bend and produce the hind quarters to step away? Very nice. And we can go ahead in this direction, produce the pole soft and create the hind quarters to step away. Good boy. Hey, I prepare him. Position them, reward them, okay? So now 
I'm going to go ahead and uh, walk him a little bit. And just kind of see if I can walk him in a frame. We'll call it a medium walk, okay? So let's get him bridled up in position, soften the pole. This produce a nice medium walk where he's chasing this bridle. And keep this rhythm, if you're like inclined to listen to music or play music, you want to keep a good rhythm here because we need a rhythm going with your horse, it'll produce a relaxation. So I'm keeping a nice rhythm and feeling the hind quarters underneath of them. I'm feeling the hind feet leave the ground. They're leaving back there by his tail. They're landing up there by his belly button. I'm feeling his front feet leaving underneath my feet and landing up by his chin. I'm feeling that four beat walk, keeping a nice rhythm to this medium walk. And now I'm gonna go ahead and let go and go to a free walk. He kind of just kind of lets down and relaxes and says, hey, that's okay, man. I'm kind of free. I can walk. Here's a free walk. A nice, soft pole, free walking. The rib cage is swinging from left to right. He's very relaxed. So he's inclined to go to the next posture or move, okay? And now we'll go in this direction. And I have my supporting rein on the outside of him going to the right. My teaching rein on the inside. I'm getting the rib cage going from left to right. And I'd like to work on now an extended walk. And walk him right on the edge of trotting. Don't trot. Get a good walk right on the edge of trotting. An extended walk. No, don't trot. Get in his way. Keep it pulse soft. A nice forward extended walk. A nice big forward extended walk. No, don't trot. And let's go to our free walk. Good boy. I like it when I let go. They relax. They drop down. They actually lengthen their back. I want everything to be soft up on top here. If you were to cut your horse in half this way, I want it to all be soft up on his back and underneath very, very strong. And so I'm kind of talking a lot of things that you'd hear like in a dressage lesson. And so I've been taking dressage lessons a long time, and I'm learning daily how much I don't know, but I'm inspired every day to go out and try to learn more to really create that relationship with my horse. Let's go ahead now, and what an opportunity to ride a horse that knows more than me, that was imported, that's showing me some really nice things. Now, I, I, I've been able to show him some things that he was lacking, but in reality, he's giving me more than I deserve. So let's go to a trot. Now, when I first got on his trot, I never really kind of experienced anything like it before. Because boy, his trot is big. And boy, oh my goodness, this is something else. And I've been riding lots of these dressage horses, starting lots of these young horses that are designed to go into the dressage arena. But this horse here, he had it in there, and it was a big trot, and boy, I had to learn to really learn how to sit quietly into it. Not an easy horse to ride. So let's go to a little medium trot here. Keep my back relaxed, and keep a nice rhythm to this medium trot. So I got a real nice medium trot going here. And I'm trying to feel his tongue with my right hand, making little adjustments with my inside rein, and keep that rhythm in the hind end, and keep a nice medium frame going by. And so there's levels of energy that we're going to work with with him, okay? So we'll call this a little medium trot. And we'll go ahead and change directions. And then again, we'll keep him on a circle, have his body bend to the sides of the circle. My outside rein will draw the circle. My inside rein will be loose when he's in good position. It's a teaching rein. Keep a nice medium trot going here. Now let's go ahead and see if we can do this on this circle. Let's see if I can sit back a bit and extend this trot. You saw that change. Just extend it. Watch his feet get out there and really extend this gate. Look at that. 
a nice big extended trot. Keep that pole soft. Yep, yep, keep it going. Keep it going like you're sitting in a buggy back there. Keep it extended. And now, let's go back to a medium trot. Now let's go to a walk, to a medium walk, to a medium walk, to a free walk. Pretty good little warm up. You actually saw him in a medium frame, had that energy going. And let the energy go out, not so up, more out into a working frame. I want that working energy going before I try to collect his energy. So you're, set, you're, you're hearing some things now. So before I progress on this trotting little demonstration, there are seven trots inside of him. There's a working trot. There's a medium trot. There's an extended trot. There's a collected trot. A passage. A pee off. That's six. And a backup. Seven, because your backup is a, is a trot. Diagonal pairs. I'll go the next direction with him. I'll do a little medium trot. Do a little extended trot. I'll come on back down. Then we'll see if we can do another trot for you. It's pretty fun stuff. And you start seeing that when you get the desired result, you quit on the desired result. So your horse at home has all these levels of energies in there that you can play with. So I get you as a student, we work on first getting your horse straight and balanced, you comfortable, your skill sets matching your horses, and we work at the beginning, we'll teach you a working trot. Teaching how to teach other post. I don't go to a sitting trot till I have them balanced with a posting trot first. So let's go the other direction. It's gotta be just as much fun for him as it is for you. So we'll go this direction, and then judge me on my transitions, okay? So I got a nice medium walk going here. And let's go to a medium trot. Pretty nice transition, huh? Let's do that again. Let's go back to a walk with my seat. Massage the pole through the transition. Let's go to a medium trot. Pretty subtle, huh? Almost didn't see what I did to get it done. That's the goal, okay? So let's go back to a smooth the hind quarters here. Keep that pole soft. Keep him reaching for that bridle. Let's go upwards to our medium trot. Let's go to a work, let's go to a extended trot. Really get inside those feet. Keep them going, keep them coming from behind. More, more. Keep driving them up there more. Keep them extending more. Right there, right there, right there. A little more, more right there. Keep that pole soft. And let's go to a medium trot. And let's go to a walk. Okay, let's try this next move. We'll try this next move. We'll go, I'll kind of talk you through it, and we'll see if he can do a more advancing move, okay? And let's go to a, a nice medium trot. Just take this energy now and collect it. And really keep that rhythm of those hind feet. Keep it collected. More. Yeah. Get it collected nice and relaxed. Good. And then see if I can lift them a little bit more. Keep it collected. Keep it collected. And then see if I can get a little bit more. Maybe a little passage here. Right there. More, right there. Yeah. Right there. Right there. Right there. Keep it going. Keep it going. Right there. Right there, like that. Look at that. Right there. Right there. One more. Keep it going. Right there. Keep it going. Look at that. Keep it going. Keep it going. Look at that. Now we're going to have to reward this here. Get out of there and say, good boy. <laughs> Fun stuff. <laughs> Fun stuff. 
Now this horse here, he knew that before he got here. He just locked you out. He wouldn't give it anymore. He said, no, no, no. I'm not going to give you that move no more. You guys aren't being fair to me. So it took me a while to unlock that move where he offered it. We didn't just take it. So the last thing he did was that big passage. Gave me a real nice, lovely move there around the corral. Nice passage. And I said, hey, good boy. Released it and let it go. He's done for the day. The last thing in his mind was, if I get that beautiful, nice, big move, I get to have call it a day. I reward him for the smallest change and the slightest try. Man, it's so nice to be back home here at the ranch. We've been on the road for so long. Deborah and I deserved a break to be home here. We needed a little hiatus. It's a thrill to be back in your living room, back on RFD TV. If we don't see in the future, see in the past. Hey, God bless you, and thanks so much for watching our course. Thank you for watching Dennis Reese, Universal Horsemanship and Natural Way. Tune in next week to meet Scoops, a troubled mare from Texas, and find out how Dennis helps her to overcome her fears utilizing the techniques of universal horsemanship. Mm -hmm.